want to tell you about something else that happened today because we think it tells you a lot about where this country is moving. When you were growing up, you probably learned one of the most basic moral principles that there is. You ought to treat other people as individuals for who they are, not on the basis of how they look or who their parents are, what their parents did. You ought to judge people for what they do and what they say for the choices they make. That was a good principle. We haven't always followed it as individuals or as a country, but we ought to try to follow it as best we can, our hardest, because bigotry diminishes and hurts people. It's pretty simple. And yet somehow, over time, the institutional left has decided to reject that idea and embrace a standard that is both new and time-worn. You may have assumed that race guilt, collective punishment, moral purity based on bloodline, you thought those were discredited ideas, creepy relics of a darker time. It turns out they're not. It turns out the New York Times wholeheartedly embraces those ideas. So does much of the left. Yesterday, the Times announced it was hiring a woman called Sarah Jong to write about technology for the paper. Within hours, readers discovered Jong's Twitter feed, which she had not bothered to delete, apparently because she was not embarrassed by it. Judging by what she wrote on Twitter, Sarah Jong is an angry bigot and not in a subtle way. Here are some examples of her tweets. Quote, oh, man, it's kind of sick how much joy I get out of being cruel to old white men. Another, quote, dumbass effing white people marking up the Internet with their opinions like dogs peeing on fire hydrants. Another, quote, hashtag cancel white people. At one point, Jong tweeted a crude graph claiming that as whiteness increased, so did awful. Later, she said that white people smell like dogs. Here's another one. Quote, white people have stopped breeding. You'll all go extinct soon. That was my plan all along. And on and on. Well, people are getting fired for far less than this across corporate America right now. But the New York Times decided to double down on Sarah Jong's behalf. Here's part of the statement the paper sent out about her. Quote, Jong's journalism and the fact she is a young Asian woman have made her a subject of frequent online harassment. For a period of time, she responded to that harassment by imitating the rhetoric of her harassers. In other words, it's not her fault. White racism caused Sarah Jong's racism against white people. She's the victim here, Harvard graduate, oppressed person that she is. Some of Jong's many defenders in the press accused her critics of taking her tweets out of context, but that's not true. We checked. There's no context for these tweets. Sarah Jong was furious at an entire race of people, and she said so on Twitter. You'd think somewhere on the left, the last responsible person would be cringing at all of this. It's all so ugly and awful. In an earlier time, it would be considered indefensible. But modern progressives are happy not simply to defend it, but to attack anyone who questions the joy that Sarah Jong derives from being cruel to white men. Lydia Paul Green, the editor-in-chief of HuffPo, who is widely regarded by her peers as a moron, announced that criticism of Zhang is, quote, part of a deeply troubling trend of far-right agitators trying to get journalists fired. Far-right agitators, okay. But actually, we're not calling on Zhang to be fired. We're not liberals, so we don't believe that every person we disagree with ought to be crushed, including Sarah Zhang. We believe in free speech, even when it's reprehensible, maybe especially when it is. What we would like to see, though, is some honesty. Let's all stop lying for a minute. What Sarah Jong said was wrong, but it was only shocking because she expressed it so clearly. In point of fact, her views are commonplace in the American establishment, maybe universal. Try to find a single government bureaucrat or college administrator or head of corporate HR who disagrees with the idea that people should be judged by the color of their skin and that some races are more virtuous and deserving than other races. They all think that, every one of them. And yet, remarkably, these very same people are the quickest to cry racism at the slightest provocation or for no reason at all. They think of themselves as arch enemies of racism. They get tattoos on their arm telling you that. And yet they're its chief purveyors. Deep, deep irony. How do they do that? Well, simple. They redefine the term. As Vice.com succinctly put it a couple of years ago, quote, it is literally impossible to be racist to a white person. Pretty much the entire left now takes that as a matter of faith. They deeply believe that. But what does that mean exactly? Is there really an entire race of people so repulsive, so morally repugnant that it is, quote, literally impossible to wrong them? You could do anything to people like that and not feel bad about it. In fact, why wouldn't you? They deserve it. They're not really human. That's the attitude. It's not hard to guess where ideas like that wind up. We've seen it 
all of us should be afraid of it. All of us, regardless of color. There are plenty of examples in history of what happens when people start thinking this way. And they're all sad. It's awful. And yet this is the mindset the left has imposed on our country. It's an attitude designed to dehumanize the individual, to erase what makes each of us interesting and distinct and vital, and reduce us to faceless members of a group. It's totalitarian. We ought to resist it with everything that we have.